Welcome to the Oddside Dice YouTube channel and this our inaugural build for the Models for Heroes Charities Project that we're conducting in 2021. In this video we're going to be looking at creating a Chaos Champion for the Chaos God of Nurgle. A champion who's on the verge of either elevating himself to a Demon Prince or falling down and becoming a Chaos Spawn. Now for influence for this build we're going to reach back to 1990 where Games Workshop produced the Realm of Chaos book, The Lost and the Damned. This book was very influential on me because it changed the way I looked at tabletop gaming, moving from mass rank, large army style play to more of the skirmish style that I enjoy today. And it's still a book that I refer to quite regularly when looking at different conversions that I'm doing. There's two main areas I'm going to look at in this book first. The first is the table of chaos rewards, and second it is the table of chaos attributes. As it would be these two tables that when working through your path of the chaos champion about the risk and reward that you would be given as you either please or displease your patron god. Also along with this, within the pages of this book there are countless artistic images and also towards the centre, a lot of painted and converted models from the GW staff at the time, namely notaries such as Pete Taylor. Anybody who's seen um, any old hammer images of Chaos Warriors and Chaos Conversions, I'm sure would have seen some of Pete's work. Now what I'm going to try and do during this build is pay a little bit of a homage to these 1990 thoughts and images. Now because the Chaos Champion is moving towards um, elevation to a Demon Prince, I'm thinking about taking the Greater Unclean One model of the time as really the aesthetic and the main inspiration behind the build. So hopefully we'll be able to build in key parts of that model as we go through and create our Chaos Champion. So where should we start? Well, over the last few years, the range of miniatures for Nurgle from GW has enjoyed a little bit of a spotlight from the design studio. And as such, there's a wealth of models we can use as our base. But one of the ones that a lot of people automatically turn to when looking at doing conversions for a Chaos Warrior or a Chaos Knight is the box the putrid light kings so we pulled a torso and legs of one of these models to act as our base for our conversion now it's all too easy to just start to go at it with a pair of cutters and a hobby knife to try and start slicing the bits off the model that we don't think that we're going to use but one of the things i would suggest is that before you start doing this is to actually clean all the parts of the base model again just using everyone's favorite the hobby knife or you could use the uh, mold line remover from GW or sandpaper etc it just gives you an idea that when you actually look at the base model complete do you really need to take parts off that you thought you were going to have to or is it a case of that you can actually remove less parts than you thought now with this conversion we're going to be using different arms and a head from a different kit. So it's at this point that now I've cleaned the model, the bits that I know I must remove is the um, upper uh, left arm on the model and then the little lug that we've got as the neck and the head joint. This will then give me the basis of what I need to carry on with attaching the new parts that we're going to put into this conversion. Now the first key I'm going to pull from the image of the 1990s Great Unclean one is the length of the arms. You can see on the little pieces of artwork that the Greater Demons had very elongated arms. So what I've managed to find that in the Chaos Spawn box there's a pair of arms that's really going to work for this kitbash. 
which is going to give me the length I want for this model and also have the three fingers and probably the skin wrinkles and texture that really tie it in to a demon prince of Nurgle and again just before I start making any modification I want to make sure that the part is as clean as possible so again I'm just going around with my hobby knife and removing any flash or little nubs that come off the sprue now the main problem with this arm is that I've basically squared off the joint at the shoulder when I've removed the arm off the Blight King model. Now although it could fit, it just sat a little bit too proud. So what I'm going to do is get my uh, precision cutters out and just square off that joint so it's no longer a ball and socket joint that it would be for the spawn kit but it's going to be more flat and fit a bit more tightly against the Blight King model. Now to this point really, you only want to get it as close as possible as you can do. Because we're going to be like doing a lot of green stuff work once we've got all the parts in place. So a lot of the gaps and a lot of the areas where it doesn't quite marry up, we can address this when we put the green stuff into place. But what you do want to make sure is you've got as solid as bond as possible. And because these are both um, the GW plastic, we're going to use the plastic cement here, which melts the two parts together to fuse them as a joint. And this is also a reason why I didn't really file either of these two pieces to make them as clean as possible. Because those little frays help the two surfaces key together and do that initial melting to keep them in place. So overall, it makes the joint a lot more solid more quickly. The left arm is actually quite straightforward as it's just really as adjusting the connection to the torso. But it's the right hand where I wanted to do the most work because what I want to do is remove the existing hand and give him some form of weapon. Now I want the cut to be made at the wrist but I want to make sure it's as clean and as accurate as possible. So I'm going to step away from using a pair of cutters to do this and instead remove the hand with my hobby knife which will give me a lot more control over where the cut is made as it won't travel as much as a pair of cutters might. Now the hand I've chosen to use is from one of the I uh, believe Ogre Tribe sets Again, people will have to tell me what the new names GW using for these models, as I'm still stuck in the 1990s. I chose this not because of the nice looking machete blade, but also the scale of the hand. As you can see, as the cut, it really lines up very close, and it's going to take a lot less work to actually put it onto the model. There's just a little bit of work that I want to do to the blade though, just to enhance it a little bit. You can see there's a couple of little nicks in the blade edge itself, but what I really want to do is make sure this weapon is corroded and as battered as possible to really tie into that Nurgle aesthetic. So, taking my hobby knife, I'm just going to cut and enhance those little dinks first off that are in the blade edge. Now it's not just this dinks in the edge that's going to sell this as a Nurgle weapon. What we are now to do is have a look at the remaining surface of the blade and give it that corroded feel. Now this obviously could be tackled during the painting stage, but one of the things GW has started doing is to really give you some texture to work with on these blades. So we're going to try and mimic that. Now the way we do this is we're going to take out our pin vise, load a reasonably large size drill bit into it and just start drilling just so we can break into the surface of the blade to leave these irregular circular holes 
like you see on other blades that are sculpted from GW. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this, basically you just want to be as random as possible and the number that you choose to put on is really just to get to the point that you're happy with. Now obviously just to make sure that we sell this from all sides we're going to have to have a look about putting these say corrosion marks on both sides of the blades. So I just go through and try and be as random as possible on both sides just to start getting these marks into the blade themselves. Now once we've gone in with our quite large drill bit I've just changed the drill bit down to a smaller one just to put some more random holes next to the big ones. This will give a differentiation between the two sizes of the holes and really sell this effect of a corroded and pitted surface. Again it's up to yourself just to be as haphazard and as random as possible just so you can really dial in the effect that you're trying to achieve. Now in this one I've only gone with two sizes of drill bit. There's nothing to stop you that if you really wanted to go whole hog on this effect. It's basically worked down for every drill bit you've got in your pin vice set to really get an overall effect of the different scales and the different forms of corrosion that have built up on a blade. Now while we've got our pin vice out, I'm going to do another job at this point. I want to attach this hand to the arm, but I want to reinforce this joint as, as much as possible because it's quite thin, the junction point. So having used my pin vice to put two holes, one in the wrist and one in the hand itself, I'm going to reinforce it with a little bit of wire. Now the wire itself is 1mm in diameter and I've just drilled a 1mm hole in uh, the hand and in the wrist. So this gives us enough availability then to just slot that wire into the hole that we've drilled. All we have to do is get a pair of wire cutters out. Don't use your precision cutters for cutting this wire because you'll just leave dinks in the end of your cutting blade and the only dinks we want at the moment are in the blade that we're working with. So it's always good to have a proper pair of wire cutters on hand. And it's just a case that when you're happy with the length of the wire, you're happy with the joint that you've got, just a bit of super glue just to fix them into place. And this will give this joint at the wrist and make it as solid as possible. And you don't risk actually snapping it at this junction point when you're actually playing with this model itself. Now the other little job I want to do is now we're moving to this model being a bit more freestanding and because I've got my pin vice out at the time I'm going to put a little, um, a little hole in his foot so I can introduce um, a cork with a bit of paper clip attached to it just so I can have the model now sitting off the table to be working on and it's going to help me when I move forward to actually applying the primer to the model once all the jobs have been finished. So for the final part we need to decide on a head. Now going through the Chaos Spawn kit I came across this Triumvirate head. It's really going to sell the idea of this Nurgle Demon Prince. The main problem is it has this quite large nub on the back which is designed to fit into the body of the Chaos Spawn. This is going to have the head sitting far too far away from the model that we've created. So we have to remove this knob to be able to seat the head where we want it to be. But this is an easy enough uh, modification to make. Because all we do is go back to our precision cutters and remove the material that we want. And then glue it into position. And with this, all the components that we have selected for this build are now in place. So now we need to look at hiding all these joints and making all these individual parts become more one model. And for this, we need to mix up some green stuff. Now, Nurgle models are really ones that you can practice your green stuff skills on. 
because these skin textures that these models have to be quite honest to be a bit more rough and ready with the green stuff you're putting on is one of the things that's actually going to help sell the whole image of the dirty and rotting skin that will be present on these models so taking the smaller slivers off the ball of green stuff you've got available to you first I'll force them into the gaps between the different parts that you've chosen to use for your model now you don't have to use the same type of sculpting tools I've got here but whatever you choose to make use of always try and keep the ends of them damp because this will stop the actual tools your fingers actually sticking to the green stuff more readily and then leaving textures that you have to try and get rid of and what I normally try and do is try and get the joints as smooth as possible and then go back and finesse it a little more carving in um, wrinkles pits in the skin maybe adding some smaller little balls of green stuff to mimic the boils and the pimples that normally are sculpted on to the flesh areas of the models that are produced and you can use any tool you choose to try and get the effect you want once you're happy it's time for us by the primer to bring the whole model together so here it is our finished chaos champion of Nurgle as this is our first kit bash to run alongside our hopeful support of models for heroes I'm really chuffed with how this model has turned out and hopefully a lot of you will follow the eBay link for the auction below and we can try and get as much money as possible from this kit bash for models for heroes but even if you aren't interested in the auction I really hope that you'd use your coffee link again in the description below to help us to buy more kits and more parts to create more of these kit bashes over the next year please refer back to our 2021 plan video to see in what other ways you are able to help out and we have all the links for models for heroes below so you can see a lot of the very worthwhile work that this charity carries out so it just falls to me to say thank you for watching this video please like and subscribe to the channel so you can see when the next kit bash in conjunction with models for heroes comes up and please use all our other social media links to keep up to date with what the odd sided dice podcast is doing so thanks and i'll see you on the next bash